Polarity. I've already discussed with you the pitfalls of faux stereo recording an acoustic guitar, which is a relatively compact instrument that sits on the performer's lap. If you'll recall, two mics placed in close proximity to a shifting source will interact negatively. The result is the sound of an acoustic guitar that swirls uncomfortably around your head. That malady is the result of a phase coherency issue, which has everything to do with a time differential. Where it comes to sound, time, and distance are one and the same. Before we get fully into microphone interaction, you must first understand what it means to invert polarity, and in particular, you need to understand what inverted polarity sounds like. This requires sitting in front of your monitors, right in the middle of the stereo field. If your monitors aren't set up such that they are perfectly equidistant from your seated position, that must be fixed first and foremost because these exercises require that you can hear the image clearly. Further, daisy-chained computer monitors, in which the left speaker receives input and then sends the signal to the right, will not supply sufficient width. If all you have available are headphones, then you should probably use those. Open up a clean session and then bring in a mono kick drum. It can be a MIDI kick or an audio file of a kick, but it must be mono for the purposes of this, and there can't be any reverbs or effects that would cause it to appear stereo. Now, go to your stereo output channel and insert a stereo plugin that inverts polarity, sometimes erroneously called phase reverse. Once the plugin has been inserted on your stereo output channel, click on the phase symbol on the left side. This will invert the polarity on that side. Listen to your kick drum. Weird, huh? Notice how the kick is no longer in the center, but rather comes from the sides. Do you hear how the low end has been significantly attenuated? That's no bueno. So what's going on here? If you take a look at the graphical representation of a waveform, you'll notice a horizontal line that bisects the waveform. We call that the zero line or the null line, as it's the momentary point in the waveform oscillation in which there is no sound. Quite simply, when the waveform is above the null line, your woofers are pushing out, and when the waveform is below the line, your woofers are pulling in. When your mono kick drum is panned to the center, it's sending equal amounts of that kick drum to the left and the right. Both monitors push the exact same signal at the exact same level, which causes us to hear that kick in the middle of the stereo field. When you invert the polarity on the left side of that mono kick drum, you are literally flipping the waveform on the left such that it's doing the exact opposite of the right. In the case of the mono kick drum, the left woofer is now pulling in as the right woofer is pushing out in a precisely equal and opposite manner. This results in some low end cancellation and a lack of center image because those woofers are no longer working in tandem to put the kick drum in the middle. A, B this a few times, and then bypass the plugin for the next exercise. Now, I'd like you to import a stereo audio file into your DAW. It could be anything, your favorite record, your latest production even. We call this program material. Play it. Sounds nice, huh? Now engage that left phase button on the stereo output channel again. Whoa! Can you locate the center of the image? Did you notice the obvious dip in low end response? Can you feel the music almost wrapping around your head? Now disengage the left phase button. Once again, you now have a defined center image and your low end has returned. We like that. Now click the right phase button. It's the same issue. You now have an undefined center that seemingly wraps around your head. Only it's not quite as obvious as it was with the kick drum, is it? Before I explain why that is, we need to perform another exercise. Now I want you to reset the polarity to normal on your stereo bus. Open up two audio channels and import or record 
two unique guitar parts or keyboard parts, preferably ones that work musically together, and pan them hard left and right. The musical nature of the parts can be identical, it's the recordings that must be unique, such that the parts can be heard distinctly from left and the right. Reverse polarity on the left side. Now put it back. Reverse polarity on the right side. Now put it back. There's no obvious difference, is there? That's because those guitars, panned hard left and right, are completely independent of one another. Inverting polarity on the left guitar causes the left woofer to pull first rather than push, but because it's wholly independent of the right guitar in terms of the recording, it doesn't interact with the audio on the other side. They have no relationship to one another beyond a musical one. You see, the pure side information isn't affected by the inversion, which is why inverting polarity on your program material isn't quite as obvious as inverting polarity on the mono kick drum. That side information makes it less obvious for someone who is hearing this for the first time. Let's mute those guitars and return to our stereo program material. Invert one side and listen once again. The low end attenuation could be significant, it could be subtle, but that skewed center image? You want to become allergic to this sound. I would recommend you perform this AB in headphones too. It's not as easy to pick off in headphones, is it? The interaction has been reduced considerably because the left and the right sides are isolated from each other. We combine the signals in our head, and so there is less obvious interaction. The center image skews, but it no longer wraps around your head. Believe it or not, for anyone who is unfamiliar with this sound, the skewed center image from the program material, along with the attenuated low-end frequency response, can actually be easy to miss. In fact, many of us have had someone sit down and demonstrate this for us repeatedly until we could readily hear it for ourselves, and you need to do the same for yourself. I would recommend you return to your stereo program material and AB until you can instantly hear the inverted signal. This doesn't need to be performed blind. You don't have to worry about expectation bias. Once you can hear it, you can hear it. This is the same interaction that occurs when you reverse the wires on one speaker. In fact, you'll start to notice that your friends sometimes have their stereo speakers wired out of polarity, and it'll drive you crazy to hear the audio shift as you walk through their living room. You'll probably even fix the problem for them. All you need to do is flip the wires at the terminal of one speaker, and that will put them in polarity again. You'll often hear people refer to polarity as phase. There are 360 degrees of phase. When we invert polarity, we invert the phase by 180 degrees, which is precisely the middle point of 360 degrees. Polarity is binary. Either the polarity is normal or inverted by 180 degrees, one or the other, which is why we can press a button to fix the problem or to break it again. It's when we introduce a time differential that we start to get into degrees of phase, and that's when things get considerably more complicated. Time differential. In order to create a stereo image of an identical signal, there must be a time differential. Let's load a mono guitar track into your DAW and make a duplicate of the guitar and its channel. Pan the two identical guitar signals hard left and hard right. So long as the faders are at unity, you will hear one guitar, the only guitar that there is, and it will appear in the middle. It will not appear to come out of the left and the right speakers independently. This would be no different from putting that guitar on one channel with the pan knob in the center. Either way, the same signal is pushing the cones in an identical manner, which causes that signal to appear in the middle. We would need a time differential between those signals to throw them to the sides as if they were independent of one another. Let's insert a sample delay plugin onto the duplicate guitar channel. If you don't have a sample delay, any old delay will do, 
but it needs to be mono, and you need to reset all the parameters. There should be no filters, no feedback, no LFO, no delay time, no level boost, no nothing. Even with the delay plugin engaged, your guitar in the duplicate must appear solidly in the middle before moving forward. Got it? Good. Now, set the delay to 23 milliseconds, then listen. Voila! The guitars appear from the sides rather than in the center. That might actually seem like a handy-dandy little trick to make a mono guitar stereo, but this is just another example of faux stereo. While a 23 millisecond time differential is enough to throw the identical signal to the sides, it's not enough to prevent some measure of cancellation from occurring when heard in mono. This can be problematic. This is where the arguments get fierce online because many young record makers wonder why the fuck they should give a shit about mono. I wondered exactly the same thing over 25 years ago. I mean, everybody had stereo by the time the mid-80s rolled around, so why would mono matter? For starters, anytime you find yourself well outside of the stereo image, you could be hearing an acoustically mono signal, which will cause some cancellation to occur between those guitar parts as they travel to your position. This will manifest as a dip in overall level, and that dip in level can shift when walking around the room. But does cancellation really matter? As with anything in this craft, it kind of depends. Total cancellation surely does. Why mono might matter. For our next exercise, we need to bypass the sample delay on the duplicate guitar in order to remove our time differential entirely, but make sure the guitar channels remain panned hard to the sides. We also need to invert the polarity of the duplicate guitar channel, but for this experiment, that has to be done on the channel itself. First, Remove the Polarity Inversion plugin from the stereo bus entirely and insert a Polarity Inversion plugin on the duplicate guitar channel. Invert the duplicate guitar. Listen. Much like the mono kick drum that we started with, your guitar image will now appear skewed and your low end somewhat attenuated. Now let's pan both of those guitar channels to the center and listen again you will hear absolutely nothing. Gone. Nada. Where'd they go? When we invert a guitar against a duplicate of itself, the original guitar pushes and pulls the speakers as the duplicate pulls and pushes them in precisely the opposite manner. You can't push and pull a woofer in exactly the same way at the same time. Therefore, the signals cancel completely. This is called null, and like polarity, it's binary. Either the two files null, proving they are identical, or they don't, proving they aren't. Two files that are close, but not exact, when inverted and summed, will produce a smattering of sound. That smattering tells you only one thing. The files are not exact. Why am I telling you all this? Because the validity of a null test is the biggest myth around, and I want you to be aware of this because you will read about people performing null tests as if they can derive information beyond a binary exactitude. They can't. Okay. With our guitar still canceling completely, I want you to raise the level of your original guitar at the fader ever so slightly, and then continue to raise it. You'll notice the guitar reappear, and as you raise the fader, that guitar will continually emit more level. The moment the two guitars have a volume differential, we begin to hear the guitar again. It's not a lot of level at first, but it's there, as is cancellation. It's just that now one of the files is a little louder, and so we're hearing the differential and level between them. Let's bring the guitars to unity, such that the guitars cancel completely again, and then pan them hard to the sides. Once again, we have a skewed image, an attenuated low-end response because there's a polarity inversion on one of those guitars. Guess what happens when we hear that in a mono playback situation? Why, they'll cancel completely, of course, just as they did when we put them together in the middle. 
And while I could buy the argument that a little cancellation probably doesn't matter all that much, particularly on a relatively unimportant part, total cancellation in mono most certainly matters. I requested a rough mix from a band I was talking to recently, and I was told that the mono roughs hadn't been made yet. Mono roughs? Of course, I asked why on earth I would want a mono rough. The answer, because the guitars disappeared when played off a smartphone. This I needed to hear for myself. Apparently, the guitar player couldn't abide by an asymmetrical image, nor did he wish to perform the part twice, and his solution was to copy the guitar track, pan them to opposite sides, and reverse the polarity of one of the identical guitar channels, just as we did a moment ago. Whereas in my room I could clearly hear the two guitars were out of polarity due to the skewed center image, it was when I played the stereo rough from my phone that the guitars disappeared completely. Why? Apparently, my iPhone is mono, and even if it weren't, the speakers on the phone are so close together the two guitars would cancel in the air before they could even be heard. So when you read the argument that mono doesn't matter, it can matter. When it comes to mixing music, I can't and don't consider every fucked up listening situation. I certainly don't worry about people who choose to use just one earbud. If I did, I'd mix everything mono. I don't concern myself with people who have their speakers inverted, and I can't do anything about people who place their left and right speakers in immediate proximity to one another, thereby producing an essentially acoustic mono signal. And then there's the phone. What I can do is protect my balances from changing due to those times when the music appears mono, whether acoustic or electronic in nature. In this case, the guitar's canceled completely. If that's not a problem, I don't know what is. Now, had there been a 23 millisecond time delay on one side, the guitars wouldn't have canceled out completely because the time differential would have prevented it. Make no mistake, there's still some measure of cancellation, just not total cancellation. Does it really matter? Probably not. You know, if you have a mono string pad and it's bugging you and it's not stereo and coming from the sides, then to duplicate and delay a side by 23 milliseconds isn't going to prevent you from a killer record. No one is going to stop listening to your music because the strings dipped in level a little bit in mono. In fact, only engineers and others reading this book will know you even did it. And guess what? We've all done it including me, and it most certainly didn't kill my career. That said, I do find it perplexing that so many people will jump through hoops to avoid recording a second part. A performed double will produce a far more stable stereo image, and in most cases, it will take less time than to duplicate and delay. Even if you're somehow mixing, if you discover you need a double, you might as well just record it right then and there. Everyone stumbles upon the Haas effect. Yeah, it even has a name. But I have to tell you, 23 milliseconds is an enormous time differential when it comes to musical timing. And that's a problem on anything that's at all rhythmic in nature. It's also kind of a problem on vocals. And where your creativity starts in regards to stereo manipulation, it should also end when it comes to your vocal. Beyond that, sure, use the Haas stereo effect if you like. Thing is, now that you know what it sounds like, you probably won't. Stereo miking techniques. You may be wondering at this point, what does any of this polarity crap have to do with microphones? Well, you know that sound of the skewed stereo image from your program material? That sound I told you to become allergic to? Your two microphones can, and will, interact in a similar manner, and we call that a phase coherency issue. Unfortunately, your polarity inversion button can't always fix it. That's because when we deal with phase, we deal in degrees. The good news is, now you know what a 180 degree phase issue sounds like, and you know it's sonic markers. You even know how to fix it. Just invert the polarity of one signal. But now we need to talk about sound and time and how that relates to microphones so that we can learn to deal with the lesser degrees of phase coherency.